Alright everyone, Maria Marquis here, and in this video we're going to talk about how to troubleshoot formulas. Because just like when you're writing an email or writing a paper, sometimes you'll get those little spelling errors, right? And you get the little red squiggles. The same thing happens when we write formulas, because we haven't quite figured out our idea yet, or maybe we're just using the wrong grammar. So let's walk through a couple tests that you can run to get to the bottom of any error that you receive. The first thing to do is to look at the error message. Coda is going to let you know when something's wrong by giving you that little red dot. You can then take a look at it, right? edit that formula, and be able to see, hmm, what's going on here? In this case, my error message is missing close parentheses. Looks like I'm, you guessed it, missing a close parentheses. I can now add it. Ah, there we go. I can also remember, click on any parentheses and see where it ends. This one doesn't have another ending, so that lets me know that's the one that needs the close parentheses. So just like a spell check issue, you can go in and take a look at what the error message is telling you. Now, if there's something that you don't understand, you can always reach out to us for help, and also maybe do a quick Google. What is a parameter? We can support you there too. The next thing to do is to always check your data types. Remember, Coda data has all kinds of data types available. Dates, times, durations, text. And sometimes a formula error happens because you're trying to compare apples to oranges instead of apples to apples. So always look at those icons. Are you seeing the thing you're expecting? If you're expecting a number, do you see that one, two, three? Or are you seeing some text? That might be the core of the issue too. You're just dealing with the wrong data type. Then we want to think about checking our colors. So inside of Coda, anytime you have an object, it's going to show up in that little chip with a color. The color lets you know the citizenship of that information, what table it's coming from. In this case, we can see that the green table has some citizens, the pink table has some citizens, and the orange table has some citizens. So making sure that you're dealing with the tables that you expect. And remember, you can always click on those chips to learn more about where that's coming from. So another good tip there. The next thing I recommend is to check the syntax. And by syntax, I might just mean the order. Are you putting the right grammar into that formula? So for example, here I've got a little bracket. It's blank. That lets me know that this formula is not working. So I can right click on that and we can take a look. Notice it's giving me an error message. This is the wrong argument type. And I'm going to go ahead and click on matches. And here it's letting me know, oh, you put in some basic text, but what matches expects is a control value. So that's why this isn't working. I'm just not using a control. So code is always going to help you out here. Just by clicking on the things, you can see, OK, filter expects a list and then the expression that we want to match on. So that's another great place to look. Look at that syntax. In this case, we just need to change this to contains. And then we got our fiction in there. Instead of having it be that basic text, we're going to go ahead and make sure that it's pulling the little chip value there. And then we can count. Boom, our formula now works. So looking for those little clues that code is giving you to help you out along the way. The other thing I like to do, particularly if I'm dealing with a really big formula, is to just start backspacing. And then looking at the little uh, window on Coda to see when I get something I expect. So this helps you figure out where the actual error is. So for example, if we go up here to this one, if I was having issues, I could just backspace until I see what I expect here in the little kind of preview window. OK, I'm getting all the books that have fiction. Why wasn't that working? Oh, that's right. I wanted to do a bulleted list instead of a count. So backspace until you get to the correct thing so you know that as you're troubleshooting, you're not messing with something that's already working. You're getting to the real source of the issue. All right, let's take a look at another tip. The other thing I love is to start small. Sometimes people feel like they need to write the whole formula all in, then test it. Remember, you can write each section and then combine them. Kind of like if you were writing an essay. You could just write the whole thing completely beginning to end, never stop. Or you could write a paragraph, go, hmm, OK, I like that. That's what I'm expecting. Now let's write the next one. You can always use columns to hold formulas and then put them together later. And the last thing, this is something that I see uh, when folks are just getting started, is sometimes they don't know what the display column is. So for example, let's do a little thing here. Maybe I want to know all of the tasks that are currently complete. Well, I would go equals. This is my tasks table. Then I'm going to filter where the status is equal to completed. And then I press Enter. It's giving me a date. That's kind of weird. 
Why is that happening? Why this is happening is because we have chosen the wrong display column, which is this little flag up here. Display column is a fancy way of saying, this is what we want to show up when we see this row. So if I want it to be the summary here, I would just click on it, go on down, choose set as display column, and now notice my formula is giving me exactly what I'm looking for. So now it's your turn. As you run into an issue, be curious. Take a look, what's this telling me? Then test, and if you ever need help, you can always reach out to us. We're here to support you. Have some fun, and I'll see you next time.